Well, thanks very much, Paul. And I just wanted to thank everybody for turning out today. As Paul said, there's probably better things we can be doing on a Saturday morning, but I think it's very important that we turn out to oppose the message of hate and division that's given by these people who may turn up a bit later. And I want to give a message of solidarity from our General Secretary, Martin Sambonka, our President, Janice Godridge, and the National Executive Committee, who discussed this matter at the National Executive Committee this, this uh, week. I want to thank UAF, Unite Community, Croydon Trades Council, and various other groups, but uh, you won't mind if my main thanks and Deepak, of course, um, but you won't mind if I start really be given a special thanks to the, whole, the PCS Home Office branch here in Croydon, who have over the years have played a really fantastic role in opposing these kind of a hate marches. And just to let you know, when this march was announced, Mike Jones, the group secretary, uh, wrote to the permanent secretary and said, immediate steps should be taken to prevent this demonstration outside home office premises uh, or, or, or work should be moved to a safe location. Because workers, when they are going into work in a, uh, at the place where they deliver services, should be able to do so without any fear of intimidation, without any fear of harassment, and without being subjected to hate speech or racist nonsense on the basis of either race, religion, or belief itself. But it is a provocation that they've announced this march outside the Home Office. But I believe it's a further and tasteless provocation to hold this march just a few weeks after a young asylum seeker, Rekha Ahmed, was brutally beaten not far from here, a victim of the type of mindless racism that divides people from each other. And that poor lad's life will be changed by what happened. But the Home Office branch here, as well as PCS and other unions, uh, supported the Solidarity March in Croydon just a few weeks ago. They gave out the strong message, no to racism and no to, uh, and no to hate. Now I want to take this opportunity to say a few words about the elections that took place just the other day in the election that's going to come up. Now, some people are a bit depressed today, but what I would say is the demise of UKIP is something I think everybody will welcome, you know. But, in my opinion, the main drivers for racism in this country are not necessarily the fringe groups. To some extent, they are, they, they, are, they are here and they can deal with them. But it's the mainstream politicians who whip up racism, whether it's talk about British jobs for British workers or Theresa May, of course. You remember the racist fan just a few years uh, uh, ago. And she now today is trying to whip up racism on the question of Brexit itself. Now, of course, Theresa May, like all Tories, is a hypocrite because she voted, remain, or she supported Remain, but she's now trying to whip up uh, racism in terms of the general uh, election. And if you can see what's going on five weeks before the election, imagine what it's going to be like in five days beforehand. So she's using Brexit for saber rattling, and we have to do our best to expose this, because her agenda in terms of Brexit is to turn this country into a low-wage tax haven. And that is why, in the remaining weeks of this general election, we know that Jeremy Corbyn stands for socialist policies, but we need a clear alternative to the message of hate, to the message of division, and a clear view that Brexit's going to happen and it can't work for the working class. So from that point of view, yes, we oppose this EU demand for a billion for a hundred billion in terms of a bill but we also oppose the race to the bottom and Jeremy Corbyn's right we have to defend the right of EU nationals to stay in Britain and so that there should be no undercutting of workers uh, wages and conditions and we have to make sure 
that everybody who comes to work in this country becomes a member of a trade union because that is what actually causes division when this undercutting goes on. Now in terms of the elections, let me just say this. I've, been, uh, I've only scanned the newspapers today, but already we get those people in The Guardian uh, actually and elsewhere blaming Corbyn for the results in a local election. Let me make this point. I don't know what you think, but I think years of implementing Tory cuts was probably more responsible yeah. for the elections yesterday rather than the policies being put forward by Jeremy Corbyn and maybe I'm not a Labour Party member, so I hope you don't mind if I give this message to the playwrights. Either shut up or get out and stop standing in the way of the I'm not a Labour Party member, but, but the, for the first time in many, many years, I have to say, holding my nose, I will be voting for Labour in, in, in a general election. Because more than anything, I want to see Jeremy Corbyn elected on anti-austerity and uh, socialist policies. And what are those policies? It's ending the pay cap, it's bringing transport into public ownership, it's restoration of EMA, it's the scrapping of the Trade Union Act, it's the minimum wage, and stopping the cuts in the NHS and education. And if that's not worth voting for, nothing is. Because what that represents is a type of alternative and the only type of alternative is going to be a pole of attraction to the message of division and hatred that's going to be uh, given out later by those members of the master race who are coming from wherever they're usually crouching and hiding here to Croydon today. So let's reaffirm our beliefs as socialists and as anti-fascists that we believe in people before profit. And it's not been a popular word to use over the course of the last number of years, but we believe in socialism to the very simple idea that rather than kick people when they're down, you put out your hand to raise them up. And I believe, comrades, I really believe this in the period we're in now, where we see xenophobia, we see the imperialist slaughter all over the world, we see the situation in the Middle East, that the consequences of imperialism, the hatred is directed towards other countries, I believe that socialism in this period is no longer simply an aspiration, it's no longer simply a good idea, it's an absolute burning necessity for us in our class and for human beings. So let's keep up the fight, we won't be intimidated by these people, let's continue the fight to end racism and the fight to build a decent society where people come first, that's worth fighting for, thank you.